Good morning friends, Robin here from She's From Scratch. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys, I've got a new baby. I've just got to find her for now. Um, we are on day four. Yeah, Annabelle had her on Friday maybe? Yeah, would that be right? Yeah, Friday she had her. Um, little heifer, I named her Cammy. Um, so we're on milking number six. I just finished milking number six. It's going good now. There was some rough patches in there and I'll give you a little bit of updates on that and some tips and tricks for if you've got a freshened cow because it's a hard week um, if you do have a freshened cow. But for now, I'm just going to go and find Cami. So one thing that Annabelle has been doing is in the morning, she's been hiding her, which is actually perfect because she was going like mental trying to um, like keep her cammy with her and it just wasn't capturing wasn't going good um so she started hiding her in the morning the last two mornings now and she's just walked right into the milking stall there hasn't been any issues at all she hasn't moved even once while she's in there so that's been something that's really positive um but i just in the morning like to go and find where she hid her i mean this is only morning two of if this happening so i won't say this will always happen but um, it's kind of a nice setup. And then in the evenings, she's been bringing her in and then I've been tucking her in to, um, I've been tucking her in in front of the milk stall. And so that's been working well so far. Um, so yeah, we're getting there. They're like, as I said, there's been some rough patches, but, um, where is she? She wants to hit her on the other side. It's a problem with having a big pasture. <laughs> Gotta walk everywhere to find her. Um, yeah, so there's been some rough patches, but there's also been some positives, so that's good. Um, part of the problem, well, not part of the problem, but just like a thing, um, is I always have help because my husband always has around to help me, and he likes milk cows just as much as I like milk cows, but he's been gone this week, so I've been doing this all by myself, um, which is not a big deal or anything, but it is sometimes handy to have an extra person when you've got a freshened cow just because things are hard in the first week you know they got a lot of pregnancy hormones trying to get the new routine down all of that kind of stuff but Annabelle luckily um if you don't know Annabelle yet last year I got her I got her last spring she was already um in lactation when I got her I didn't have a calf with her and the reason they were selling her I presume, um, is because she was really crotchety. <laughs> she was a crotchety cow. I spent two months training this cow. She was hard to train um, and finally got her to a place where she was standing really good at milking. She would go into the milking stall, um, you know, so got her to a really good place. And um, yeah, it just took a long time. So I'm glad that she has kind of picked up those routines again. She's standing really nice at milking. Um, walking herself into the milking stall when she doesn't have her calf to worry about. So all of those kinds of things. Now where is she? Oh, she's right here. Hi, Cammie. So she looks just like her mama. Except for she, so she's Normandy, brown Swiss. So half Normandy, quarter brown Swiss. No, half Normandy, quarter Guernsey, eight brown swiss and eighth holdstein so she's a mutt of a milk cow little heifer so she'll be our next family milk cow hopefully but uh she's super cute so she's been doing really good she's huge it's been super hot lately here so i've been watching her but she seems to be drinking she drank annabelle out this morning before i um, brought her in i could tell that she'd been um she'd been sucked out so that was good. Yeah, so she's drinking. So cute. Cows are funny how they hide their babies. It's really cute that we have that happen on with our beef cows all the time. They'll hide them and they don't even worry about them when they hide them because they know that they put them there. They also sometimes will leave them with babysitters. So sometimes one cow will be looking after like a whole bunch of other calves. It's really cute. But all right, so I'm filling the water trough up right now. Lots of nice clean water for a freshened cow. They've been drinking lots of water, so that's good because, um, yeah, it's been hot. So in the mornings, I've just been, um, yeah, milking. Then the girls are in the barn right now. Milking, then feeding them some nice 
um, second crop alfalfa hay. I've been keeping them stocked for that day so they can eat it whenever they want. They prefer to eat on the pastures, but the pastures right now, it's end of July. So the pastures are not great right now. They're dry. Um, there's some green stuff out there, but they're kind of all headed out, not as nutritionally great as they once were. So um, I do want her to be eating some of this alfalfa. So she's got some nice alfalfa there. One thing that I've been struggling with is she hasn't been eating her grains. So if you watch my last video, you know that I transition um, fed her. So I started her on grain a couple weeks before she was going to calve, just so that she was all ready to go when she did calve and she could start on her full ration of grain. But I haven't actually been able to get her to eat her full ration of grain, eat any grain at all. Um, and I think it's just the stress of everything. Sometimes if they're not eating grain, that can be a sign that they're struggling with ketosis. Um, usually they'll start refusing grain before they start refusing dry feed. Um, but I feel like it's just a transition thing right now. We're only on day four. Um, it's a little bit stressful for her when she goes in the milking stall. That's where I'm feeding her grain. Uh, you know, she's worried about her calf a little bit. She's ticked off when she doesn't have her calf, you know, so it's been a bit of a transition thing. And I think that's why she's not eating her grain. I would like her to eat it though. I don't want her to kind of make herself susceptible for to ketosis. Um, I shared in my last video that she is technically a grass fed milk cow. Um, she, I bought her from grass fed lines. As far as I know, she never had grain before, so I was just feeding her um, grain in case she needed it after she calved. And you can see that in my last video, I explained all um, why I was worried about ketosis with her. She was a little bit overweight, um, those kinds of things. So I wish she would eat her grain, but she's not eating it. Um, so I'm just going to keep an eye on that, but maybe by a couple more days and I'll get her to eat it. I've kind of been enticing her. I put molasses in there. Um, what else have I done? Yeah, put molasses in there. Uh, put, it's 16% dairy ration. So yeah, anyways, I'd like her to eat it, but she's not right now, but she's still eating dry hay. So that's good. If she eats something, that's good. As long as she's eating, I'm happy. Um, happy-ish, happy-ish. <laughs> What else can I tell you about this week? So right after, I'll give you a little update of her calving and everything I shared out over on Instagram all about it, kind of did a play by play. As I said, I was alone this week, so it was a little bit of a, like a scary thing for me to um, have a cow that was close to calving and I was really hoping that she would wait until Zach got home, but she did not. So I had a plan in place in case I need help. You know, I've got um, some really good neighbors here. So I had a plan in place in case I needed help um, with pooling or whatever like that, but she had it on her own. Nice big healthy calf. She had it at 9 a.m. on Friday, Friday morning? Thursday morning, Friday morning. 9 a.m. Friday morning, she had a little cami. I was so excited when I ran up and saw that it was a heifer. I was like, oh my goodness. Like I had done this thing on Instagram. I was showing people how cow's hairstyles actually can tell you what, it's an old wives tale, but cow's hairstyles can tell you what they're gonna have. If they've got a really curly hairstyle um, when they're pregnant, they are gonna have a heifer. And if they have a kind of really straight hairstyle, they're gonna have a bull. So I was showing off my cow's hairstyles the day before Annabelle calved. And I was saying, ah, it kind of looks a little straightish, probably gonna have a bull. And then she calved and it was a heifer and I looked back at the picture and I was like, eh, maybe it's a little wavy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, I got a nice little heifer off of her. So I'm very excited about that because we um, really want to kind of expand our herd with some of that Normandy line. And it was not easy getting the Normandy semen. So it's nice to have a heifer um, off of the Normandy semen. And then Brie is due September 5th. This is my heifer. And she's also bred with Normandy. And then Claire, not due for a while, um, she didn't take to the Normandy, so we ended up just uh, covering her with a bull here on the ranch. So she's Angus or something. Angus or Simmental bred. So um, yeah, nothing fancy with Claire, but that's okay. She's half beef, half Holstein anyway. So um, yeah, so she had her calf 
and everything went well. Right after she calved, I took her a five gallon bucket full of nice warm water that had a cup of molasses in it. When I went up to the house to get everything ready, I knew she was calving. I went up to the house to get all my stuff ready, that molasses bucket, and I had planned on giving her some oral calcium boluses, but I went and I opened the package of these oral calcium boluses and they were giant. Like I've never seen a bolus so huge. And apparently this is a standard thing. I just didn't know about it, that calcium um, boluses are just ginormous. They don't fit in regular bolus guns. You have to have a fancy bolus gun to be able to administer these calcium boluses. So I realized that right while she was calving and I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? So I ended up hammering it up. I put it in a plastic bag, hammered it up, and then threw it in my blender and grind it into a really fine powder. Um, and then I added that into the molasses water. And thankfully I took it out to her and gave it to her and she drank it right up all of it. So I was like, oh, thank goodness. So I hope that worked a little bit for milk fever. I mean, I'm sure it worked a little bit, but I hope it worked as effectively because I feel like the calcium boluses maybe are a slower release. So it would be better if they were in their entirety. But at the end of the day, it's just good that she got some calcium into her so that um, she's just less susceptible to having difficulties with milk fever, which again, talked about in the last video, is a low blood calcium level that you really want to prepare your cow for because it's sort of inevitable in dairy cows that they're gonna have low blood calcium when they come into calving. And it's kind of the cows that can ride the storm and get through that low levels that are able to not get sick with milk fever. So gave her that, she drank it right up, and then I hauled her a bunch of water. It was hot that day. It was like, I don't know, I'm in Canada, but it was like plus 36, no, plus 34 or something like that Celsius. So I don't know what that is in the States. And also it's probably not that hot for people that live like way down south, but uh, in Canada, that's hot. That's like the hottest it gets. So it was hot that day and I hauled five gallon buckets of water <laughs> to her and she had water all day every day or like all access so that's what you want your cow to have really easy access to water um so yeah i hauled that to her um put some of this nice alfalfa hay in front of her she was eating it right away so the purpose of that molasses water is to get them on feed fast you want to give them a little energy boost after they calve so that they go and they start on feed and hopefully they don't struggle with ketosis again in that last video that I talked about. So she started on that little bit of feed. She was even eating some grass around. Uh, yeah, and she just did really well that day. Um, I milked her that night at about nine o'clock. So she had the calf. I think she actually had the calf around 10, um, 10 in the morning. And then I ended up milking her at nine that night. Usually you'd want to wait like 12 hours, but I figured that was close enough. Um, first milking, hmm, did it go okay? I think it, yeah, I went okay. Yeah, it was a little bit tricky um, just with the calf, and I ended up keeping the calf in the milking stall with me. I put it in front that night, just kept it with me. And so she stood okay, like she kicked a little bit, but not too bad. Um, but the worst part of it was she was just shuffling because she was trying to see her calf behind her. And if you've seen my milking stall, it's got a head gate and then um, she has to kind of, she can turn her head and see behind her. So she just she kept shuffling, trying to see her calf. So that was probably the hardest part of it. But I just took, you know, um, I think I took like two gallons of colostrum. I left some back for Cami, uh, quite a bit back for Cami. And the purpose of that was just to get a little bit of colostrum for the house. I took it up, um, I strained it, which I wouldn't have strained it. I usually don't strain it when I'm just keeping it for calves on the ranch here, but I usually just throw it into the um, freezer bags because colostrum is really difficult to strain. It takes forever to strain. Um, but I have been hearing a lot of people like drinking colostrum and eating colostrum and stuff. So I just, I decided to strain it just in case. I put it in the freezer anyways, but I, I don't think I'm gonna consume it myself. I think it's just for the animals on the ranch, but you never know. I might get inspired and want to consume it myself. So I strained it off. Um, if I was just saving it for other animals, I don't usually strain it. I just throw it into the freezer bags, mark it first colostrum because that's the stuff that we want to, I agree, that's the stuff that we want to be feeding to brand new babies here on the ranch if they need a little boost of colostrum. Um, we got three 
nice big bags for it in the freezer for calving season now um, if we need it. So that's a very handy, handy part of having a milk cow is getting that nice good colostrum for the other calves on the ranch. So um, yeah, that was the first milking. Second milking I did in the morning. So now I resumed my regular milking schedule. And I would talk about a little bit on Instagram how I was trying to decide if I was gonna do a 16 hour milking schedule or a 12 hour milking schedule. So typically the regular milking schedule that you're gonna hear about all the time that most of the dairy farms use, except for the ones that have robots, or sometimes they'll do three day, times a day milking. That's a whole nother story. Um, but mostly you're gonna hear about a 12 hour milking schedule where you're milking your cow twice a day. So that's the regular one. That's the one that we've always done until last year actually when we got Annabelle and she came to us on a 16 hour milking schedule. And the reason that she came to us on a 16 hour mil milking schedule was because she came from a grass fed dairy. And the farmer was finding that they were losing too much condition if he milked them every 12 hours. So he bumped it up to 16. Um, it's also called a three in two milking schedule. It's common in Europe, I think. I think it's common in Europe. That's where they call it three and two. Uh, so it's, you milk three times over two days. And actually we really enjoyed that milking schedule. So how it looks is you're gonna milk at 9, uh, 9 p.m. and then you would milk, uh, so actually, let me say this again. So how it works is on day one, you're gonna milk at 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. That's day one, that's 16 hours apart. And then on day two, you're gonna milk at 1 p.m. So one in the afternoon is when you're gonna milk next. That's 16 hours from your last milking. And so you're doing this two day milking schedule basically where you are milking morning and night for one day and in the afternoon for the second day. And it worked really well for us um, because Zach and I, for the most part, one of us is usually around. You know, Zach is full time on the ranch. I have another job, but a lot of times I'm home in the afternoon. So one of us is usually around to do that 1 p.m. milking. So it actually, it worked okay. Yeah, it worked okay. And so I was kind of tossing around the idea of doing that again, but I decided just to go with the 12 and then later on I can switch to the 16 if I think she's losing too much condition. As I talked about, I am supplementing her with a little bit of grain. So if she starts eating it, then that's great. Um, maybe I will just keep on the 12 hour one, but if she doesn't, then I might have to switch to the 16, but we'll see. Um, I decided, ultimately I decided to go with the 12 because of the heat. It was just so hot and I really, milking at one in the afternoon sounded like torture. So I decided not to do that and just go with the 12. And um, yeah, so that's good. So when we set up our 12 hour milking schedule on our ranch for our milk cows, we leave the calf on 24 seven. And I'm gonna be planning on trying to calf share with Annabelle. She is a bit of a crotchety, like I talked about before. So I don't know how well it's gonna work, but we're just gonna try it. We're just going in just with feelers, seeing how it goes. Um, no set plans, but we're gonna try and calf share with them. So when we calf share for after they are born, we leave them on 24 seven. They're with mama 24 seven. And we're gonna do that for two weeks to two months where they are on that mom all the time and we're still milking twice a day. And with high production milk cows, you kind of need to do this. You still need to milk twice a day, even if you have a calf on there 24 seven. I bet you Cammie's drinking maybe a gallon a day right now. You know, she's a little brand new newborn baby. Last night I milked off, Annabelle still is getting, she's still transitioning from milk to colostrum. But last night I milked off probably two and a half gallons, I would say, two and a half gallons. And then this morning I milked off two gallons and both times I could tell that she had just been sucked. So I can tell that the calf is always sucking on this teat because it feels sort of slimy when I go to wash it. So I know which teat she's liking to suck on a bit. Um, just because it feels a bit slimy with the cloth. So Cami had just drank and there was still that much left in. So she really needs it and she's her production is just gonna keep rising until she reaches peak lactation, which can take up to usually 60 days or so, they're reaching peak lactation, 60 to 90 days. 
So um, yeah, we do that until the calf is big enough to start to kind of handle one of the milkings. Once it's no longer worth it for us to come down for one of the milkings, then we start locking the calf up for 12 hours. Um, so for example, we would leave the calf on all day, lock them up at night, and then we would milk her in the morning and then reunite them. So that's something that we um, have done in the past that has worked really well for us on a ranch with calf sharing. And as I said, we're not set in stone that we are absolutely going to calf share, but it's something that we would really like to do if we can swing it because, I don't know, I just like having the calf on the mom. It just, it makes me happy. It makes them happy. Um, yeah, so I, the reason that we probably wouldn't, the couple reasons why we might not calf share is if she's just behaviorally too bad. If, um, you know, if she, if we're really struggling with that behavior, that would be a reason that we might not. Um, but I like to give it a couple weeks, you know, like even if she is kind of being bad, routine is everything with cows. If you can just rep like rep repetition, repetition, repetition every day, that's going to, that's going to put you so far ahead. Um, so if we can repeat what we're doing, you know, this tw tw twice a day milking, every day for two weeks you know we, we might get into a really good routine where she's okay with leaving her calf out in the field or she's okay with her calf coming in and going in front of the milking stall another reason we might choose not to calf share would be if the calf starts cutting her teeth teats cutting her teats if the calf starts um, biting on her teeth so that has happened to us before it's a pain in the butt um, it opens your cow up to a lot of pain and mastitis risk but sometimes calves are really aggressive and they scrape on their teats and it leaves kind of like line cuts on them um, so we have had this happen before I that's probably another video that I'll tell you how we actually ended up dealing with that but a lot of times the best way to deal with that is just to wean the calf so yeah, again, just play it by ear, see how it goes. But because Cami is going to be our future family milk cow, I would like to leave her on Annabelle as long as I can. I would like her to have a really good start to life on mom's milk. You know, Annabelle's milk is perfectly suited for her baby. When Cami is six months old, Annabelle's milk is going to be perfectly formulated for a six month old calf. Right now, Cami is four days old and her milk is perfectly formulated for a four day old calf's milk. So, uh, calf's health, sorry, I mean. So, you know, I would like to leave her on there because it really does give her the best chance at life. It gives her the best start to life so that she will become a really good family milk cow for us. Other options we could consider would be um, if Brie calves in September, we could take Brie's calf and put it on Annabelle and I could just milk Brie or we could take Annabelle's calf and put it on Brie and yeah then I would just milk one cow and have two calves on the other one but I think that would be logistically really hard we definitely have to separate them um, and as I said I kind of just like to have the calf with the mom it's like it's it's just nice to watch them together so I don't know we'll see but going into it with an open mind is kind of key so um, another thing that's been going on is, as I said, um, the first night she didn't take Cami, uh, we took Cami in, or I took Cami in and I put her in the milking stall kind of with me. And so that was a bit of a pain because she kept turning around trying to see where Cami was. So the next day I made Cami go in front of the milking stall and that was perfect. She still moved to her throughout the entire the entire milking, but she stood still. She didn't have to turn to try and see her baby. She knew where she was. And that seems to be her biggest thing. She just wants to know where her baby is. So if I can kind of accommodate her on that, whether she has hidden her baby out there and she knows that it's out there, or whether it's in the milking stall and she knows that it's in the milking stall, you know, that seems to be what's keeping her calm, what's helping her to um, feel comfortable. So that's where we're at with it, that. So in terms of her milk, her milk has definitely started to come in a little bit. I can tell that it's not such colossal for me anymore. It's starting to be an actual milk. So probably tomorrow, which will be day five, we might start consuming the milk. It might still have a little bit of colostrum in it, but we probably would be comfortable um, starting to consume it then. Not comfortable, just it would probably taste okay then. I don't like to drink colostrum. But um, 
I won't actually start making cheese with her milk until she's at least one week postpartum. And so the reason for this is that colostrum actually isn't meant to coagulate. Colostrum is meant to stay liquid so that calves, when it comes into their abomasum, which is their fourth stomach, they can actually digest the whole antibodies from it. And so it has to permeate through the lining of their stomach, basically. Now, once a calf um, goes on milk, their lining of their abomasum has that enzyme rennet in it. And so that liquid milk actually becomes coagulated and turns to cheese. And the purpose of this is so that it slows down di the digestion of the milk. And so the calf can kind of glean all of the nutrients that that milk has to offer. So usually by after a week, um, that milk has very little colostrum left in it. That calf is an ultimate little cheese maker. It's turning its mother's milk into cheese. And you know that that milk is going to coagulate. So anytime I have ever tried to make cheese with milk from a freshened cow um, that is less than a week, I've always had troubles. So just waiting that week just gives you a lot more success. It keeps you from getting discouraged. Um, and yeah, it has really helped me in the past by just making that firm line with myself. I'm not going to try and make cheese until she is one week postpartum. As far as Annabelle's udder goes, she's very edematous right now. All right, so I just want to show you Annabelle's postpartum udder after I have milked her out this morning. So I didn't milk her out completely. I definitely left quite a bit back for a little cami to calf, but you can see how edematous it is. So this is normal, this edema up here. It's uncomfortable for her, but it's normal. It's not hot. Um, it's just, fluid basically. Um, so I definitely left some back for Cami, but I milked out her back teats almost completely and then left the front ones. So um, all of this is just edema up here. Not much colostrum actually left in there, just edema. So very uncomfortable for her, but other than just like supporting her with salves and stuff like that, um, that's the best thing you can do and just monitoring for mustards. But her udder looks like a good postpartum udder right now. This is day three after I've milked. You can see that some of the upper edema is starting to go down a little bit. I completely milked out the back teats again. Um, so this is significantly less than when she first calved. Um, still have this front edema. That's still there. But um, I would say for sure her edema is going down a tiny bit. So that is a after I've milked udder. Her edema will probably go down by week two or so. It's definitely starting to dissipate a little bit, but it should be, you know, mostly gone um, after the second week is over. As far as everything else with her udder health is looking, you know, she's not having any signs of mastitis. There's no blocked ducts. So when I feel it, there's no heat concentrated to one area. It's full. After I milk, it still feels like it's very full because that's just edema. But, um, I, but there's no infection going on in it. So that's um, really positive. Knock on wood. <laughs> I hope that uh, that doesn't happen, but uh, so far, so good. She's doing good. <laughs> Please. You should go with them. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so far, so good with utter health. Um, her placenta, I feel like she probably passed it, but I never saw it. And so when I came down and saw that she was calving on at 9 a.m. on Friday morning, she was eating her water bag, um, hadn't had the calf yet. And then I never ended up seeing a placenta, but because she was eating her water bag, I'm sure she probably ate her placenta if it did come out. Um, because I never actually physically saw it, I am watching her for signs of infection. She had some discharge coming out yesterday. Um, it wasn't actually tissue though, it was just discharge. And I just smelt it, smelt fine. There wasn't no smell, foul, old, foul, there was no foul odor or anything like that. Uh, she seems healthy, she's on food. Um, no lethargy or anything like that. Right now she is clean and clear. So she seems like she's living her best life, her best postpartum life, doing good. Um, but I do, if you don't see the placenta, you just want to watch that. Um, there's no signs of infection. Sometimes they won't expel the placenta in the first 24 hours. Usually they do. If they don't expel it in the first 24 hours, it's considered retained, but sometimes they will just lose it by themselves in that first week. Um, at that point, they kind of, their uteruses just have to shrink down. And once they shrink down, then they'll expel it. 
So definitely talk to your vet if your cow hasn't had her placenta in 24 hours because that is retained placenta, but your vet might just be like monitor for signs of infection. And um, as long as there's no signs or anything, she'll probably expel it on her own. If she didn't, um, if she had ketosis or milk fever, those are sometimes times when they're not going to be able to expel their placenta on their own. Sometimes the vet has to come out and flush them out. And so that's a whole different story. They get antibiotics, all sorts of things like that. Consult with your vet, but usually not something too bad to worry about, but it's just good practice to make sure that you're monitoring your fresh and cow for any sign of infection, whether it's in their uterus or whether it's in their udder. Um, also monitoring for signs of milk fever. So after she calved, the first thing I did was um, gave that, that calcium drink, but I've also been monitoring her probably every four hours or so for make sure that she isn't having any signs of milk fever. So um, I checked on her throughout the day on that first day, throughout the day on the second day, even I got up once in the night on that one, uh, or the night after she calved. Um, and I'm going to continue to monitor throughout the week. I'm letting it go farther now um, because she does seem to be doing good. Her milk is starting to come in. She doesn't seem to be struggling. Again, knock on wood, hopefully uh, nothing happens with that. But so far, she's doing okay. So that's my little milk cow update. I hope that I covered everything in it. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a good day.